what a beautiful day it is. Welcome here, folks. Thank you, musicians. You really bless us. The words for that song say, He knows my name. So perhaps you could actually just introduce yourselves to the people alongside or in front of you or behind you. Tell them what your name is. G'day. Welcome to you. Hey there. Yeah. We're going to introduce you to another uh, person um, later on, and his name is Edward. If he was in New Zealand, he'd be Edward, but he's actually he's in Australia. Edward, Edward the emu. Have you ever read this story to your kids? Ed, yeah, so Edward the emu. So we're going to hear the story of Edward the emu because it's about identity. It's about knowing who you are. So we'll have that in a little, a little while in our worship. So I, um, I want to just take us to. A verse on screen, is that? It's a big verse there. This is a reminder for us about who we are. If you're a baptised person, if you're baptised, you're into God's family. So maybe we could read this to be reminding of who we are. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Well, we're here in God's name. Do you know what that is, if you were baptised in God's name? Let's try it from memory, shall we? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so today we're celebrating 14 years of mainly music happening here at Faith Warradale. And uh, that's been a very special uh, long life ministry of our congregation. In fact, one of the ladies, um, Linda, showed me a photograph of the the birthday, birthday cake that she made when mainly music turned five. So that'd be nine years ago. That would have been in 2015, I think. Yeah, so I haven't got a chocolate birthday cake today, but we've got lots of little ones with freckles on it, hundreds and thousands of them. So we'll look forward to that. All right, and we're going to hear more from Melita later, but we're going to start our Mainly Music uh, memories today with a Mainly Music song.
that. So not only did God make you, but he knows your names. And from left to right, we had Melita, Joy, Carleen, Tiffany, Jill, and Lorraine. Yeah, they're just kids, really, just all grown up. <laughs> yeah, big kids. Now that now everybody can sing this song. Uh, not only did he make you, he knows your name. So maybe you might like to stand up if you're able and sing, He knows my name, I have a maker. Jesus Christ, true God and the Father from eternity, is also true human being, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. Great cost he has saved and redeemed me, a lost and condemned person. He has freed me from sin, death and the power of the devil, not with silver or gold, but with his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. All this he has done that I may be his own, live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead and lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. The Lord be with you. Thank you, and he is, and so knowing that he's with us, we can pray confidently. Almighty, merciful God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Help us to follow him and walk along the way that leads to eternal life. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, He lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, let God's people listen to God's word now. So from Joshua chapter 24... Uh, various verses from starting with verse 1. Joshua called the tribes of Israel together for a meeting at Shechem. He asked the leaders, including the old men, the judges and the officials, to come up and stand near the sacred tent. 
Then Joshua told everyone to listen to this message from the Lord, the God of Israel. Long ago, your ancestors lived on the other side of the Euphrates River, and they worshipped other gods. This continued at the t until the time of your ancestor Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor. Then Joshua told the people, Worship the Lord, obey him, and always be faithful. Get rid of the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived on the other side of the Euphrates River and in Egypt. But if you want, don't want to worship the Lord, then choose here and now. Will you worship the same idols your ancestors did? Or since you're living on land that once belonged to the Amorites, maybe you'll worship their gods. I won't. My family and I are going to worship and obey the Lord. The people answered, you could never worship our other, we could never worship other gods or stop worshipping the Lord. The Lord is our God. We were slaves in Egypt as our ancestors had been. But we saw the Lord work miracles to set our people free and to bring us out of Egypt. Even though other nations were all around us, the Lord protected us wherever we went. And when we fought the Amorites and the other nations that lived in this land, the Lord made them run away. Yes, yes we, will we will worship, worship and, and obey, obey the Lord, Lord because, because the Lord, Lord is our God. God. This is God's word for us today. Thank you, Lord, for this, this word, word of encouragement. Our New Testament reading is from Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. Finally, let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. Put on all the armour that God gives so you can defend yourself against the devil's tricks. We are not fighting against humans. We are fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world. So put on all the armour that God gives and when that evil day comes, you will be able to defend yourself. And when the battle is over, you will still be standing firm. Be ready. Let the truth be like a belt around your waist. And let God's justice protect you like armour. Your desire to tell the good news about peace should be like shoes on your feet. Let your faith be like a shield. And you will be able to stop all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Let God's saving power be like a helmet, and for a sword, use God's message that comes from the Spirit. Never stop praying, especially for others. Always pray by the power of the Spirit. Stay alert and keep praying for God's people. Pray that I will be given the message to speak and that I may fearlessly explain the mystery about the good news. I was sent to do this work, and this is the reason I am in jail. So pray that I will be brave and will speak as I should. This is God's word for us today. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord for its equipping, equipping word. word. And the gospel comes from John, chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are one with me and I am one with you. The living Father sent me and I have life because of him. Now everyone who eats my flesh will live because of me. The bread that comes down from heaven isn't like what your ancestors ate. They died, and whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus was teaching in a synagogue in Capernaum when he said these things. Many of Jesus' disciples heard him and said, This is too hard for anyone to understand. Jesus knew that his disciples were grumbling, and so he asked, Does this bother you? What if you should see the Son of Man go up to heaven where he came from? The Spirit is the one who gives life. Human strength can do nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are from that life-giving Spirit. But some of you refuse to have faith in me. Jesus said this because from the beginning he knew who would have faith in him. He also knew which one would betray him. Then Jesus said, you cannot come to me unless the Father makes you want to come. That is why I have told you these things to all of you. Because of what Jesus said, many of his disciples turned their backs on him and stopped following him. Jesus then asked his 12 disciples if they also were going to leave him. Simon Peter answered, 
Lord, there is no one else that we can go to. Your words give eternal life. We have faith in you and we are sure that you are God's Holy One. This is God's word for all of us today. Thank you, Lord, for this good news. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your words that bring eternal life. Help us to believe in you. Amen. Amen. Well, this Sunday, we're, we're blessed to say thank you, Lord, and celebrate 14 years of mainly music here. And um, we've got a couple of mainly music songs that we, we're going to um, invite you all to join in. And after the first one, Melita's going to come and share with us some of the wonderful things. Just a reminder that, um, that kids belong. Each one is precious, are they? Each child is precious to the Lord, precious to his people. So, thank you, Melita. We'll have our first song. Would she like to come out here on her chair? Get ready. This is about Noah's Ark. We're going to help Noah make the, build the ark, and we're going to be some of the animals, like a kangaroo. The father or and mother kangaroo went into the ark one day. Shut the windows, shut the door, the rain is coming, it's starting to pour. Father and mother monkey went into the ark one day. Shut the windows, shut the door, the rain is coming, it's starting to pour. Hurry, get out of the rain. I'm so glad God said you ought to build a boat where no water, no one made a boat of wood Just the way God said he should I'm so glad the sunshine came And God made rainbows after rain Father and mother zebra What kind of a zebra Father and mother zebra Went into the ark one day Shut the window, shut the door The rain is coming and Father and mother bull and cow went into the ark one day. Shut the window, shut the door, the rain is coming and starting to pour. Hurry, get out of the rain. I'm so glad God said you ought to build a boat where there's no water. No one made a boat of wood just the way God said he should. I'm so glad the sunshine came and God made rainbows after rain. What animal is next? <gasps> what animal is next? Is there any more? Any more? All the animals are in, all out of the rain. Well, that's good. Let's give a clap. <laughs> well, all safe, as Pastor Tim said. Mainly music is celebrating 14, 14 years. We would like to acknowledge past volunteers in whatever capacity they serve. And let's give a clap for our current volunteers that are helping. Now, birthdays are acknowledged in our Mainly Music program and we have bubbles that we use, so if a couple of you can pick up the bubbles and we'll have some bubbles coming out and we'll sing happy birthday. And we'll also light the candles, which compliments from Brighton Beach, we collected some sand so the candles can stand up in them. <laughs> I think. Would you like to come up and blow the candles out? First, once Kevin is... Okay, you can start the bubbles, please, and we'll sing happy birthday. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, mainly music. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray! Wow, I love bursting the bubbles. Okay, 
We usually clap how many years of birthday? So let's clap. 14. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, we're going to blow the candles out now. Whoops, a daisy. Do you want to go up and light? Here's one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Ready? Who else was there? Right, get a lit. Okay. While we're blowing out the candle, we've got the second slide. Um, team members have been. Uh, the first oh. point there is that a Christ, it is a Christian-based program. Uh, team members have a time of prayer before each session and parents and care carers are invited to write prayer requests on paper provided. And then the, we acknowledge these prayers in the, prayer, in the team prayer time afterwards. Uh, it says that um, mainly music originated in New Zealand 34 years ago. So Warradale Mainly Music is one part of the National Mainly Music Organisation. And it is a community-based ministry. I have to get my little book out. Um, Craig gave a talk here a couple of weeks ago on how we can reach out to our community and we have an, a lady from India in our group, so uh, she was teaching me how to say hello in uh, Indian. So I'll have to get my book out and practice that one. Okay, so the next slide. The children get involved in the music, dancing and singing, and they tell us what are their favourite songs. Mm. Uh, we've got a poster there where the uh, all the parents had an opportunity to say what are they grateful for mainly music and we've got uh, statements there about how the program is fun, um, how we care for them. And this is what I wear when I lead a mainly music session and Kevin reminds me in the car park to pull my pants down if we go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> or we go separately. <laughs> um, as it says, morning tea and, uh, is enjoyed by all. Fruit and morning tea is enjo enjoyed. Next slide. As you can see, we have an amazing team. We all bring who we are and our unique selves to each session. Aren't they a marvellous bunch? <laughs> but much ha also happens outside. There's two main tasks. It's the administration and the second one is the cataloguing of all the music. And we've got Brenda Howes here this morning who does that amazing job, spends hours and hours. Mainly music has a vast array of songs and Brenda and Jenny, one of the other team members, come together and work out what songs fit into the weekly program. Next, yeah, next, there's Brenda up there. Okay, so for this program to continue, yes. So God is leading us and we, we trust that he always leads people to us so that we can continue. How can you help? Well, we can pray for the families. Um, we have space on our team for anyone to come and join us. Um, we always need helpers for the food roster or help in the kitchen. So I'd like to say a prayer now, um, if we can take a couple of minutes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the current families and volunteers at Faith Warradale. We ask that you may lead more families and children to us to enjoy fellowship and hear of your love in song. 
provide a new team member to help in administration in the new year as our current person on the front desk and administration is retiring this year. And we also ask for additional helpers on the food roster. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Pastor if he will uh, give the team a blessing. Yeah, let's pray for them, shall we? Father God, so thankful for all those who come and serve, um, who have great big hearts for the little people. I pray your blessing on them, firstly on the children and their families, and then on all those who volunteer, who serve and lead, who prepare food and who, who put it out there for everyone. Bless them with peace and a strong sense of, of doing this together in community. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good day. <laughs> it is good, isn't it, Genevieve? Hey, yeah. Excellent. Uh, well, you could sleep on the pillows if you really wanted to. That's fine too. I could do. I could. I could do with that. Yeah. So, can I bless you? And we continue. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, last week it happened. Um, some some of you are aware that we've been waiting for the news to pop down from pop out and down from Mildura. And um, during the week, our youngest daughter, Sarah, became a mother for the fourth time. <laughs> she, she delivered a booming baby. He's uh, very toytonic. He's like a little box head and nine and a half pound of blondness. So, yeah, gorgeous baby. They haven't named him. But isn't it great? As grandparents, and, and you know this too, uh, our prayer is that he'll continue to know who he is, who Jesus is, and that he'll live as part of God's family. And his parents, his grandparents, his godparents will teach him. It's, just, it's such an essential thing, isn't it, that people know who they are and whose they are. This Sunday we're going to have a brief look at two texts that speak to these two things of who and whose we are. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, as we listen to your word today and think about it, Remind us again of who we really are. Teach us again who you are so that we can live together in peace with you and make the most of this precious life you've given us. Amen. Amen. So I said I'd introduce you to Edward, and, uh, but then I realised this is a bit too small for you all to see. So it came up with this, Googled it, and uh, here we go. It's a, it's a simple story, a lot of fun and uh, nice pictures and... Um, it's, been, it's been around since the 80s, that story, so perhaps some of you have shared it with your kids or grandchildren. I think, the, or who, how would you describe the moral of that story? What are they, what are they saying is happening here? What's, what's the deal? What's it teaching us? Be happy with who you are. That's one thing, yeah. What else? Sorry? Be yourself. Yeah. Anything else? Everyone's got value. Yeah. Don't pop from one friend, friend to the next. Yeah. And could the bottom line be finally Edward realised who he was? <laughs> He's an emu. And I wonder if that's a challenge for modern day people too because there are so many choices and selections out there. The question is, do we know who we are? But alongside of that is a question, whose are we? Who we are and whose we are. They're big, big questions. And look, if you look at the world and see some of the struggles and the challenges going on between people, and I know that you experience them, as do I, it's when people lose who they are and whose they are that we start to break out and start to hurt and destroy and to fragment and to dissolve and to break apart. 
when we lose sight of who we are and whose we are. There's a little group that meets here on Thursdays called Mainly Music. And I expect, and I think that at Mainly Music, the kids and the families come along and one of the central things that they learn is who they are. Every one of those little children is a little child who knows their name. And the team of people who are there, from Jenny at the door who writes their name down, they know who they are. The mums and dads know who they are. The helpers behind the counter know who they are. And the, the, the others that sit along the side of the seats and just are there to look out for and care for the parents and the grandparents, they know who they are. And those kids learn not only who they are, but that they are precious. And that this is something that their community does for them to actually build and encourage them, remind them who they are, but also whose they are. It's amazing that the power of, of music to actually encourage and engage people into community. Even that song we sang, God Made Me, it's a, it's a, it's a song that says both an answer to who we are and whose we are, made by God loved by God and uh, when it's sung together it has a greater power than just thinking about it by yourself perhaps. These children very clearly know whose they are, who loves them and who cares for them. During every session of Mainly Music there's an acknowledgement of God, the Father who created them, Jesus who loves them dearly. And there at Mainly Music, those small children get both who they are and whose they are. And that's a marvellous thing. There we go. Dad loves his boy. (laughs) Cares for them. Now there's two readings that um, we heard from uh, out of the three. One is from Joshua and one is from the Gospel of John that kind of speak to this. And the first one, you've got it on on screen. And I think this one actually speaks to who who they were and um, it's important because it pulls no punches it puts it out there in black and white who are we Uh, well we were slaves we were abused we were mistreated we were starved we were beaten we didn't have our own land we didn't have our own place that's who we were until God came and rescued us and assured us of who we were. Said, you are my people. Imagine these slaves having God and meeting and getting to know God who knows them, who they are, who lifts them out of slavery, who redeems them out of slavery. And they looked and they saw the way God delivered them. They saw the way God protected them wherever they went. They acknowledged these things, led them to confess their own weakness and their inability to save themselves. Not only had they been slaves, but even when they were delivered and given freedom, they knew that in themselves they didn't have the capacity to do for themselves what God had done for them, to set them free, to love them in a way that nobody and nothing else could. And so knowing themselves very well, finally... They confess this and we can confess it with them. Uh, We know who we are. We know that God is our God and so we will worship and obey the Lord because the Lord is our God. That's what they said. Yes, we will worship and obey the Lord because the Lord is our God. Here comes a question. How important is it for you and how important is it for me to know Jesus, not just to know who we are but now we move into the territory of whose we are. In the sixth chapter of John we uh, encounter Jesus has gathered with his people, with these disciples and and he'd had fed the 5,000 people, he'd done extraordinary miracles, there were people and as Jesus said you came for the free feed and, and that's what they did. And you came for the miracles and the healing, yes. But the question was, had they come for that full-time relationship with Jesus to actually belong, 
to belong with Jesus. Not just to know who they were, but whose they were. So Jesus is um, talking to them and then he starts telling them about this incredible thing. He starts to describe himself as the bread of life. And that seems pretty straightforward. There's just a, you know, a metaphor going on here. Yeah, we can live with that. And then he says something really quite concrete. He says, unless you eat this bread, you don't have life in you. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Then he says, my flesh is this bread for the world. And the scripture tells us there in Gospel of John, and we heard it before when Joy read it to us, that a whole bunch of these people who'd come for the free feed, who'd come for the miracles, said, "Ah, this is too hard. And they left him. They stopped following him. In a sense, they cut themselves adrift again, back to that lost place, where they really didn't know who they were. They were just people meandering from this idol to that idol, looking for a free feed here, looking for satisfaction there, when they had Jesus there all along. But no, what you just said is too hard for us. Uh, is, it, is it that hard, really, for, for Jesus, who fed 5,000 people with just a few loaves of bread and a few fish? Is it that hard really for Jesus who actually visited a dead person and gave them back life? I don't know what makes some things so hard and yet when Jesus' teaching gets very clear and he's saying, now you need to hear this and understand that if you eat this bread, this bread, you will live forever. This food is real food and it will be a part of you. I will be a part of you. You will be a part of me. And I think that's probably the crunch point for people. Then and there, they just did not want to be that connected. Because if you're that connected, well, it's got implications, hasn't it? If I'm a disciple of Jesus, what does that mean? If you're a disciple of Jesus, who's to whom you belong, what does that mean for your life? I was listening to uh, a podcast this week um, from CPX and perhaps some of you listened to CPX and they were interviewing a um, a plastic surgeon who must have been doing quite well in his practice because um, after he came back from a visit to the Mercy ship and the Mercy ship is one of two ships that goes from port to port particularly on the African coast It's filled with volunteers, volunteer doctors, anaesthetists, nurses, um, teachers, everything needed to run a small community of four to five hundred people. They all volunteer their time. He went for a visit just to see what this was about and he was amazed at all of these Christians. He came home and got there with his wife and family and said, I want to tell you now, my life has just changed through this experience. I'm a Christian. I just met or I went on to a ship where four or five hundred Christian people have been. And I'm telling you now, dear wife and kids, that this double-storey house on the river doesn't really mean much to me anymore. These cars, this boat, the holiday shack, don't really mean much to me at all now. What was he saying? I think he was saying that Jesus had changed his life. And from then on, over many years now, eight months of the year, he has volunteered on mercy ships as a surgeon, doing for free what Western people paid mega bucks for. But realising that 20 minutes of his time as a surgeon or, or of the eye doctors could give life back to somebody who hadn't had it, maybe even for their whole life. As a plastic surgeon removing a tumour from, from an adult or from a child because, well, as he explained, there's, there's only one surgeon in 100,000 people in Africa. And, um, and most of those surgeons are in the cities and most of the people are actually out in the bush. So when a tumour starts to grow on a person, it just grows, it just grows, it grows. They become disfigured horrendously and they withdraw from life 
in community. Or if somebody's born with a cleft lip or cleft palate, the parents hide them behind closed doors. When a, a simple surgery could give them back life. He said things like, um, and he learned this from the doctor who had been on mercy ships right from the start. He said, you can't change the world. And sometimes that's the daunting thing, isn't it? When Jesus calls us out, says, you know, here they are, look at all these lost and hurting and lonely and broken people. We say, oh, but we can't change the world. He says, but yes, you can You can change the world for that one person. And then he referred to Mother Therese who cared for people totally lovingly and said, when she looked at the task, she said, well, I'll care for that one in front of me and when that one's fixed, I'll go to the next one and when I cared for that one, then I'll go and care for the next one, one by one, changing the world. So, that's, that's just an, one example, and you might say, oh, this is amazing, but this man discovered whose he was and what that meant to him, to be, to use the gifts that the God who knitted him together had given him to be the presence, the loving presence of Jesus as a disciple of Jesus in the world. And then I went to the ALWS presentation, Australian Lutheran World Service presentation up at Aberfoyle Park and I saw there were quite a chunk of people here that were there. And that was was really, well I found that a real heart opener because I know about the work of ALWS and perhaps so do many of you, you know. Uh, We're coming up to Gifts of Grace time and uh, we'll have the ALWS appeal and and we'll, we'll give gifts and thank God that we can. But it was extraordinary to actually hear the testimony of somebody who'd come from Ethiopia, who was the head of, no, Nigeria, who was the head of the Nigerian, no, Ethiopia, sorry, head of the Ethiopian branch of the the Lutheran World Service, telling stories of how your dollar or mine, which doesn't seem such a big deal to us over here, can make a huge difference to people over there. Isn't it? It's true. It's true. At the end of it, she said, look, um, gifts of grace, would you give a farm? A farm? I haven't got a farm to give. Ah, but you know, if you could afford to give $5,000, you would give a farm. But you wouldn't be giving it to a a fellow who would become a farmer for himself or herself, probably likely to be her. You would be giving it to somebody who would farm a small block Maybe only an acre of maize, of potato, of sweet potato. Maybe with some goats, maybe with some sheep. And they would give away and sell and make a living out of that and that would bless their community. And that $5,000 that you or I might spend on that farm would just keep on giving and going and growing in that community. Would you give a goat... Maybe you and, and two other people would give two, two does and a buck to, to a little household who just have a village and a little pen where they kept their goats. The first goat that's born to them, they would give away to become part of the founding herd of another family. Would you give a batch of fertile eggs so that somebody could start their own little chook business I heard these things and I thought, I could do that. I could do that. I got friends. I did bike for Bibles 20, no, 15 years ago and and, and it was writing to raise money for Bibles for people in an overseas country and uh, I put my head down to it and I raised 8,000 bucks. I tapped my friends on the shoulder. (laughs) I gave some, some for myself and I'm about to engage in, or start a Joy and I conversation about this farm business. You know, I, I'm, I'm a thwarted farmer. <laughs> I'd love to be able to give somebody a farm that I can't have. So I'm thinking I'll tap all of my friends and rallies on the shoulder and say, would you join me in giving a farm to some people overseas that can't afford it, but where our gift will just keep being multiplied 
would you join me? So we, we, we're still going to ex- explore that. But it's part of being whose we are, isn't it? Yes, I'm a follower of Jesus, but what does that mean in real terms? Those people that left Jesus then when it got too tough because they couldn't really accept the who's of, of what it might mean for them to be followers of Jesus. They went, but there was this group of people that stayed behind. It was Peter and the disciples. And Jesus said to them, well, what about you? All these other, they've gone. But what about you? And Simon Peter answered for them. And what did he say? Lord, there is no one else that we can go to. Your words give eternal life. We have faith in you and we are sure that you are God's Holy One. This is the Son of God who redeemed his people, rescues us from slavery, forgives us our sin and invites us to journey with him with open eyes, with open ears, with open hearts with eyes and ears and hearts for the lost, the least, the lonely. Never mind the ones around us who've got everything they need. Have eyes and hearts and ears for the lost, the lonely, the broken, the starving. And ask Jesus, Lord Jesus, you feed us with the bread of life. How can we feed them? Fair question, if we are his. Think of yourselves and the faithful Christians that you know, God's people. Look around when when you receive the invitation to gather at the Lord's table here in a little while. When he offers to feed us with the bread of life, think of who you are and remember whose you are. When you come to the table and you hold out your hands to receive the body and blood of Christ, when we bow our heads in prayer and thanksgiving at this gift of mercy, forgiveness and life, surely we are confessing with Peter and those close disciples, you are our God. And with the Israelites and Joshua, we are your people. As for us and our households, we will serve you. We might also say there's no one else we can go to. Your words, your body and blood give eternal life. We have faith in you and we are sure that you are God's Holy One. See, we can't just take it or leave it. If we're there at the altar and we have in our hands what we hold, we can't just take it or leave it. We're clearly saying to each other, we're clearly saying to the world, we're clearly saying to Jesus, we are your disciples. Our hope, our faith, our trust is in you alone. And if it weren't for who we are and how we are, there would be no need, of course, for a saviour. But how we are is sinful and we need saving day after day. In fact, the saving's done. We just entrust ourselves into his keeping, into his leading, into his life, which is our life. Perhaps knowing who we are, we would soon realise that we could never truly and fully be at peace with ourselves and others unless we are in Jesus Christ. So here's a concluding paragraph. Who are you and I, really? We're sinners. We're lost, we're hurting, we're lonely, we're broken apart from the mercy of God. That's us apart from the mercy and the grace of God. So knowing this, we confess Jesus is our Lord. We live as his people. Whose are we? We are his. Amen. And now may the peace of God that is deeper than all our human understanding keep all our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.
pray. The God of our Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, whom he raised from the dead, continue to fill you and bless you with every good thing you need for life. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you, give you peace now and always. Amen. Amen.